Welcome to our quick video on equivalence for the Prep for Practical Nurse Mathematics program. One of the things that you'll have to be able to do uh, in your future courses and work is be able to calculate the mass of one equivalent. Now we've already heard about the unit moles, which is a way of turning large numbers of molecules into smaller numbers, was saying with using the word moles. Well, equivalence is another kind of a shortcut. It refers to the amount of a substance that will react with a another comp, another element or compound. And that how much will react is dependent upon the number of ions or its valence. Now, valence is something you had to calculate previously. So we're going to make up our own little formula here. We're going to take a big M which is like molecular mass, except we're going to put a little subscript down on the bottom EQ. So that's going to stand for the mass of one equivalent, one chunk of whatever is going to react. That mass will end up being in grams. That mass of one equivalent will equal its molecular mass or molar mass, which we know we're going to look up on the periodic uh, table. And then we're going to divide that by its valence, or the number of ions. Now remember with an element, its valence is listed right there in the periodic table. But for a compound, you have to make sure you find the one for all the elements that will match it out to make the compound stable. In other words, if one has a valence of two and the other element has a valence of one, the valence for the compound will be two, because we need two to make it stable. Okay, sounds like fun. Let's go on and try an example here. Let's calculate the equivalent mass of an element. So for our example here, we're going to use iridium. And it's a heavy metal because, well, it's metal and it's heavy. So we're going to go look at the time, the periodic table, and we're going to go read its two things. One is its M, its molecular mass, and its valence. So we're going to put up our formula, the total mass of one equivalent is equal to the molar mass of the element divided by the valence. From the periodic table, we can see its molar mass is 192.22 grams. Its valence is, well, 4. Positive or negative does not matter. We plug it into our equation, 192.22 grams divided by 4. The end result is 48.055 grams which rounded up gives us 48.06 grams. So the mass of one equivalent of iridium would be 48.0 grams, six grams. Now, if I were to make a little drawing to pretend uh, that we, this is the amount or the group that, of uh, iridium that would be uh, used in making a chemical uh, reaction with another element. So we can see that there's quite a bit. Cool. So that's the, the basics of calculating an equivalent mass. The next type of question is we might have to find the equivalent mass of a compound. In this case, we're going to look at ammonia, which is NH3. So once again, we go to our periodic table and we find hydrogen and nitrogen. We look up in their periodic tables, their molecular masses, and their valences. We can see that hydrogen's molecular weight is 1.01. We know that there are three of them in NH3, so we multiply them by three. The molecular mass of nitrogen is 14.01, and there's only one of them, so no multiplying needs to happen. What we then go is we go to our, to our equation and we find the mass of one equivalent by taking the molar mass of the compound and, div and dividing it by its valence. We know from adding up that the molecular uh, mass of ammonia NH3 is 17.04 grams. We also know that its valence would be 3 because if nitrogen is 3 and we have 3 hydrogens, we end up with three is being the valence for the stable amount. We then take our molar mass for the compound, 17.04 grams, and divide it by that valence of three, which gives us a mo molar equivalent mass of the compound of ammonia at 5.68 grams. 
So if we look compared to iridium, that small little bit of ammonia, it's, how much is going to react is a very small amount. It's at 5.68 grams. Now that we've been able to calculate the equivalent mass of a compound, what if we had multiple equivalents of that? Could we find its total mass? Of course we can. So here we've got a question where we ask for the mass of four equivalents of ammonia, NH3. We go to our periodic table and we found out the mass of equivalents in the previous little steps. So if this was a question, we may have to do that or we may be given the mass of one equivalent. Then what we know is the total mass, in this case the little m, will equal the mass of one equivalent times the number of equivalents. In this case, we know that the mass of one equivalent is 5.68 grams. We know that the number of equivalents is 4. We can see that in the question. We then plug in our, into our formula 5.68 grams times 4, which gives us 22.72 grams, which means that if we take four equivalents, add them up, 5.68 times 4 is going to give us 22.72 grams of a material that's ready to react. Of course, like all things, what we can do forwards, we can do backwards. What if we were given a total mass and we were asked to find the number of equivalents? For example, how many equivalents of ammonia could be found in 85.2 grams? So once again, we go back to our trusty periodic table. We calculate the mass of one equivalent, which is 5.68 grams, and then we go back and rearrange our formula. In this case, the number of equivalents will equal the total mass, which is the little m, over the big M with the little eq, the mass of one equivalent. Once again, that's the total mass divided by the mass of one equivalent. So the mass we know of total, the little m, is 85.2 grams. The mass of one equivalent we know from our calculations is 5.68 grams. The number of equivalents, therefore, then will be 85.2 grams divided by 5.68 grams, giving us a final result of 15 equivalents, which means that in this reaction with that amount of ammonia, we would have 15 of these little chunks or units or equivalents of ammonia. If any piece of advice on doing these questions is that Sometimes they might be a single step or they might have multiple steps. For example, calculating the number of equivalents or calculating the total mass of a compound may require that you find that mass of one equivalent first. So practice calculating the mass of one equivalent. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it helps you solve these questions.